Today we are going to have a conversation about human vision, specifically focusing on how the eye works, the process of lens accommodation that allows us to see objects both far away and up close, the conditions of far-sightedness and near-sightedness, and the ways in which glasses can help to correct these common vision problems. So let us begin with the human eye. The eye is surrounded on all sides by a dense shell, the sclera. Inside this shell, in the main part of the eyeball, there is a transparent vitreous body, and the front part is filled with so-called aqueous humor. The clear front wall of the sclera is known as the cornea. Located behind the cornea is the iris, which contains a pupil at its center. The pupil is like a little window through which light enters the eye. In bright light, the pupil narrows and lets in less light, but in the dark it expands. Behind the pupil is the lens, the primary lens that creates an image of objects on the retina, which is situated on the posterior wall of the eye. The light-sensitive elements of the retina, cones and rods, transmit visual signals along the optic nerve to the brain. We've already familiarized ourselves with the anatomy of the eye, and now we'll be dealing with it like in real physics with a simple model. The main component of this model is a small crystal consisting of two elastic films that are filled with water, which plays a crucial role in its functionality. And by changing the water pressure using a syringe, you can change the focal length of the lens, focusing on either close or distant objects. Now let's proceed to assembling our model. Put the pedal to the metal. Subsequently, the iris will be placed. We place a protective horn-shaped covering over it to ensure its safety and preservation. And lastly, we conclude the procedure by sealing the cornea with the anterior portion of the sclera. And our model is assembled. And now we can start the experiments. We set up an eyeball across from the spotlight with a triangular mask. Activate the spotlight. Furthermore, on the rear wall, there materialized a rather indistinct image because the lens was in a state of disarray. Now I am going to focus it by pressing the syringe and making the lens of the eyepiece more convex. The picture became clearer, but it still falls short of the expected level of sharpness due to the strong scattering of light in the thick plastic wall of the eye, which hinders optimal focus and clarity. So I substituted the thick posterior wall of the eye with an extremely thin screen and now I am able to focus once more. And we observe that we obtained an exceedingly clear image on which it is even possible to discern individual light emitting diodes of our spotlight. Now let's pay attention to the fact that this image is upside down. And now we'll explain why this is happening. Let's sketch rays originating from the top point of the object. They converge on the lower portion of the retina, and the same rays from the bottom point of the object are focused in the upper part of the retina. That's why the image of the object ends up being flipped. The image flips our brain into a normal position, and that is the reason. And now we're going to talk about this thing with the human eye called accommodation. This is the ability of the eyes to see objects equally sharply whether they are located somewhere far away or objects that are close enough to the eye. To bring the eye into focus, the lens must adjust its optical power in order to ensure clear vision for the observer. And that means he has to change the curvature of his surface. And special muscles are responsible for this, which are located inside the eye. We took three bright LEDs as a light source, and they are located 50 centimeters away from the eyeball lens. The image is sharp and focused. Now let's relocate the LEDs 20 centimeters towards the front for better illumination. The image expanded as the rays of light from the LEDs diverged at a larger angle, resulting in the spread of the image. And to focus them, we need to increase the optical power of the lens. And for that, you've got to increase its curvature, which I'm about to do by increasing the pressure inside the lens. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the picture once again became incredibly sharp and clear. Now that we've sorted out the accommodations, let's talk about nearsightedness and farsightedness. 
If I take off my glasses, I see distant objects quite blurry, and I am able to perceive the letters in the book with clarity, but only when I bring the book close to my eyes and examine it carefully. And this vision defect is referred to as nearsightedness. Therefore, it transpires that it is due to the optical power of my lens being excessively high. And in order to correct this defect, I wear glasses with lenses that disperse light, as people commonly refer to them, as minus ones, with a negative optical power. And farsighted people, on the contrary, see distant objects clearly, but close objects are blurry. And this occurs because the lens they have lacks the necessary optical power to properly focus the light. In order to correct farsightedness, individuals with this condition wear glasses that have converging plus lenses, which possess a positive optical power and help to improve their vision. And now we are going to do the same thing, but this time with some hands-on experience. And now our eye model is working in nearsightedness mode. The light source is located at a considerable distance, and the image displayed on the screen appears to be slightly blurry. I am going to place a diffusing lens right in front of the eyeball, and as a consequence the image became much sharper, and the visual quality improved significantly. To switch my eyes to far-sighted mode, I must decrease the optical power of the lens in order to achieve the desired effect of improving distant vision. And at this moment, the image of the remote object appears to be very sharp. However, when I relocate it nearer, the blurring effect becomes more pronounced. And now, in order to correct it, you need to put a converging lens. And we can see that the image has indeed become much sharper, 